What's up guys, it's Johnny Candido of Candido Training HQ. And today I wanted to talk about a hotly debated topic and that's science versus bro science. Now this is a common conflict that people have because they don't know whether they should listen to the skinny scientist who studies specific facts or whether they should listen to the big jacked meathead in the gym who's obviously doing something that works but he might not necessarily be giving the best advice all the time. Now that's really what I want to emphasize in this whole debate is that there really is no clear-cut answer to a lot of problems. Because what this is, is this really isn't science versus bro science. We all know science is based on evidence and is what is proven to be true. So anyone who's arguing against science is just an irrational person. But what we need to understand is this really isn't science versus bro science. What it is, it's specific studies versus interconnected principles. And what I mean by that is a lot of knowledge when it comes to lifting is based more so on logic than specific facts. Because if you're setting up, for example, if you're setting up a training program and you have someone, you know, bench three sets of five and then a set of two reps afterwards. So you pyramid down. Now, is there necessarily a specific study that says three sets of five, then one set of two is going to help you prepare for a max out the next workout? No, there isn't. There's not a single study because that's too specific. That there, The chances that a study would be that specific is extremely unlikely. Now, however, you can take the knowledge from other studies and use the principle that lower reps will help you prepare for a max out logically. It'll help prepare your nervous system. It'll help moving your reps down over the series of a month generally helps move from conditioning to preparing for a max out and then will allow you to use more weight when you do max out because your central nervous system is more ready for those heavy weights. Now, none of that is an actual specific study on the exact rep scheme, but you don't need necessarily that because you have this general base of knowledge and understand how everything is interconnected. So that's really how most methods of training and nutrition are based. They're based on specific knowledge that is then taken to create a principle and then is applied to other specific scenarios. So many methods are not 100% proven but they are very logical based on what we already know. A good example of how specific research can then be applied to a logical training system is Pryopin's chart. Now this is a chart that the Westside Barbell Club method was based upon. The researchers looked specifically at how many sets uh, at a certain amount of weight would be the most effective. So it's very specific. It looks at if you do two to four reps, how many sets you should do until you should stop and the recovery is then damaged too much to where it's not worth it to continue. Now I don't use the West Side Barbell Club method myself, but that is a good example of a method that's founded on science like all methods and training systems should be. Now the real issue I have with the people constantly promoting the science aspect of lifting is that they usually extend science to mean something it isn't really meaning that science isn't this obvious concrete knowledge that is super clear cut that applies to everything the reality is we really can't prove much with science that we only have this limited base because for example if you have a test on whether creatine works or not let's say they use five grams of creatine on new lifters first of all all that is proving is that five grams of creatine works with new lifters so then if you lift it for three years who knows if that applies to you? Then you say, what if you take, what if it doesn't work, the study says? What if seven grams of creatine works? What if 10 grams of creatine works? What if two grams works better? You never know because the specifics are always going to not apply directly to you. Now we still can use this general knowledge, obviously, that if every study involving creatine didn't work, we'd obviously be able to have at least a good idea of its effectiveness but to act like this is all extremely simple like science is this sort of religion is just ridiculous now another problem I have with the people who constantly promote science 
that don't even look like they lift themselves is that they constantly say that the messenger isn't important. Now this thought that they are exempt from their own results is ridiculous because even in, all science is, is science is formalized observation. So obviously if their collective methods are not form, forming any results, then perhaps there's a problem with their methods. That's the basis of scientific thinking. Now of course you, did, you all have it broken down into variables, but the best way to look at it is to see how their progression is. Because let's say you could argue that they're not genetically gifted, but if they're not progressing even as much as a standard lifter, then obviously there's a problem with their frame of thinking and perhaps the information that they are implementing into their own routine. Lastly, I want to say I'm not siding with bro science at all by any means because my definition of bro science would be the lifters that say things that have been completely disproven. If you're going to say something that has been disproven and you still do it and you still promote it, that is definitely a problem. What we really need to do is we need to take the new knowledge that we get and constantly apply it to our logic and let it reform our logic moving forward. Perhaps our logical assumptions that did make sense at the time now do not due to our new specific information. Here's an example of where logic can fail. If the premises are in fact true, then the conclusion is justified. So that's why this argument is sound. However, it is not valid because scientific studies have shown that there is a limit for which you can intake protein before you start seeing diminishing returns or even adverse effects. What it's all about is it's about combining information from research, from application, and from experience to get the best base of knowledge and the best logic possible when it comes to dictating what is the most effective program in terms of training and nutrition for you. So if you enjoyed this content, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching guys. Peace.